Alright guys, BLM here, back with a new video in this video. We're back talking about BB22, and here we're going to be doing my mid-season power rankings. And, I mean, we're not really halfway through the season. Technically, I believe that's next week. But, we have just started the jury phase of the game, and I feel like this is the best point to stop down and talk about who I personally think has the best chance of winning at this current point. Now, this will include spoilers for the Big Brother live feeds up until Friday morning, which is when I'm recording this. So I will talk about the most recent HOH results, more than likely their targets, and that will also affect my ranking as a whole. Before we jump into the rankings, though, I might as well talk about the season as a whole. And obviously, so many people online are very upset how the season is playing out. I will be honest for myself, for the first like four weeks of the show, I was actually still enjoying it. And for me, the Caser Week might have been the best week of the game for me. I mean, like, I understand people found it very disappointing to see them not even consider really keeping Caser or anything. But there was just so much stuff going on there with the Tyler versus Cody kind of, like, pseudo-war that was going on there where essentially they were fighting for pawns. Where, like, Tyler was able to pick up Bay and Day. He was able to flip them, plus, like, Enzo on Danny, which pretty much put him in a perfect position moving forward that was just fascinating to watch and see like cody like slowly realize this all that was really really fun to watch to me we also had ian starting to kind of figure out the house dynamics not really though i mean like he was pretty off on certain things but i mean he was actively playing the game a bit more at that point telling other people information that was fun as well but for me the bane day week the la i mean essentially the last week we just had it really sapped all of my enthusiasm from the season if i'm being honest i mean at this point i'm kind of just feeling meh about it. i feel like now i'm more in line with the rest of the audience but not for the same reasons but again that bay and day week for me just it really just sucked if we're looking at bay and day being nominated and how they retreat by christmas that wasn't good that wasn't fun to watch in any way mixing that of the tyler stuff where tyler wants to quit and tries to use their cause to kind of rationalize his quit which i understand tyler wants to leave the game again 100 he was not into this season the entire way through he completely lost me at the point where he starts bringing up the movement and their cause for being the reason why he wants to quit because obviously that's not the reason he wants to go home because he wants to be with Angela and this is the last round before jury and again, do I think he was maliciously doing this no obviously like I think he was very clearly looking at that as probably like a second or third good reason for why he would do it but it wasn't definitely his main motivation and i think through that it becomes very construed and obviously he eventually changes his mind because i do think that again that was probably like his third reason for doing so i, I think first up was him wanting to go home be a fan angela i think second was him wanting to repay bailey for what's happened to them in the past and obviously i think that was the third reason but for him to bring that up i i don't think it was a good look for him and also, I just feel like it's led to so much negativity, both within the game and also online, that's just, it's it's not fun anymore. Like, the season isn't fun. Again, there's still potential, there's still a lot of maneuvering around. I mean, while the actual gameplay itself isn't bombastic and exciting, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that is really interesting to me. But obviously, as the second all-star season of the show, so far this has been a bit of a letdown. So that's the season itself. I mean, I guess we can briefly talk about some of the players that are gone at this point that won't be included in the rankings. So let's start off with Keisha, the first boot. I mean, she barely did anything. I mean, she barely fought the stay. I mind you, a lot of that's because she didn't know she was staying or not. But I don't understand how, like, she kept on being told, like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know who I'm voting to keep. It's like, that's... a pretty clear sign that they're voting you out <laughs> it's like I, I don't get how she didn't see that and really she brought nothing to the season as a whole i think she was pretty disappointing on this season next i got nicole anthony and nicole anthony was also a pretty big disappointment on the season mind you I, I never really had much faith in nicole anthony as a player to begin with i don't think she played particularly well last season it felt like she was just making the same sort of mistakes but in a completely different context and in this context with this cast and the way that this season was playing out it was definitely less in her favor. Obviously, she got a lot of hate for not believing Kaser and Janelle. Which I don't understand how it took her that long to start believing that like Kaser and Janelle were actually on her side. Also, again, pretty big disappointment on this season. Again, didn't really bring much to the season as a whole either. 
Next up, we got Janelle. I think this season solidified it for me that gameplay-wise, there's just not much else there. I, I, I just don't think Janelle's a good player. <laughs> like, she was safe for the first week, but I don't think she would have gone home in that first week. I mean, Cody was very clearly targeting Kaser. He wanted to work with Janelle. But I think that's one of the problems with Janelle is that Janelle very openly targeted Cody and Tyler, two people that really wanted to work with her. And it's through her own fault. I mean, yes, she had this massive target coming in. She was definitely the biggest name of the cast. She did have people like Danny and Nicole targeting her. But those were the only people targeting her when the season started. I think it is due to her own missteps that she wasn't able to build a coalition around her despite having individual people that were wanting to work with her. And when the season started, I mean, she had Bailey, she had Kaser, she could have aligned with Memphis. Nicole Anthony wanted to work for her. Devon wanted to work with her. Obviously, she had Keisha. It's like she had people around her, but that group of people just couldn't get any power in the game. They couldn't win a competition to get themselves power, and she completely neglected other relationships with people that were in power. She neglected the relationships of Cody, Tyler, or Enzo, some of these people that I do think would have worked with her. So while I do think Janelle didn't have a great chance on this season, I do think she wasted a lot of opportunities. And the same thing goes for Kaser. It sucks because I love Kaser so much, but it's like... I mean, he played terribly this season. I mean, again, yes, he came into this season with a massive target on his back. Yes, he was targeted by Cody right off the bat. But after he survives that, he plays terribly. It's really weird with Kaser, where it's like he has some bad reads, but then like when he has a good read, he's like spot on. Like he has it exactly as it is. And he didn't have a great exit from the game, but it's like he, he ruined his own game. And like once Janelle got out he was in a decent position he got very unlucky that enzo won hoh which was one of the few people that would have targeted Kaser in the next week but also he just kept on targeting cody and tyler which again just completely ruins his game and cody enzo and tyler were talking about how they really wish they could have made a move like backdooring danny or something but they can't because Kaser is targeting them and I mean Kaser just really ruined his own game and it sucks to see I mean like I really thought Kaser would be coming into the season a changed man we obviously saw his previous two times how he was the leader of his alliance kind of looked at as like a martyr for his alliance I thought he would come into the season with a different mindset but no, he's the same case. He's the exact same player. And because of that, he didn't do well again. And I was talking about Bailey, who I, I find it very disappointed Bailey went home this early. I think coming into the season, I had a lot of hopes for Bailey. I think Bailey had a lot of potential as a player. In BB20, I mean, there was that one point before her HOH where she was the best positioned in the house. And coming into the season, I was hoping that she would be able to do the same thing, especially once Casey and Josh were gone, two people who probably were going to target her early on. But she was just never able to really do it. And it really sucks because it's like, I, I feel like really what brought her down was Devon. I feel like Devon blowing up her game like she did in what week two, week three, where she would try to spread misinformation, trying to like test people. And then those people eventually collaborating really worsened the position of both Bailey and Devon because they were looked at as this pair. And I feel like through this season, I think she very clearly demonstrated that she is still a good player. I think she's just given pretty bad situations and has a pretty big weakness in the game in the sense that she can't separate personal from game. Because I think Bailey is someone that's very good at making personal relationships with people, but I think through those personal relationships, she assumes that they also have a game relationship without ever really solidifying that game relationship. And I do think that is something that really harmed her on this season with her obviously thinking that she had a game relationship with Christmas when really Christmas never really looked at their relationship that way. So after season, in my opinion on Bailey's game probably stayed about the same, though it was already probably higher than what certain other people probably thought of her game to begin with. Now onto the actual ranking itself. We are ranking 11 players, the 11 players that are still in the game. Let's start off with number 11, the person who I think has the least chance of winning the game at this current point is Kevin. And for me it kind of sucks to say because I do feel like if you asked me like a week ago, maybe two weeks ago, I thought Kevin was actually in a decent spot to make a deep run into the season. Again, like I don't know how likely it is that he wins, but I do think there was a chance he makes it pretty far. However, at this point, I do think he is the most likely boot for the week. Ozzy Danny is the current HOH, and she is going to be nominating. Well, I mean, at the time that this comes out, she probably already did. But again, I'm recording this Friday morning. So her plan is to nominate David and Kevin. David will more than likely use his power. That leaves Kevin there as a pretty juicy target to take out. I mean, Kevin was already the person that Cody and Nicole wanted out. And Kevin is someone that 
is probably the most dangerous player out of the people not in the majority, considering I do think he has the biggest chance of winning a competition. There's also this like ill-conceived notion that Kevin might have a power. Obviously, we know that Christmas, David, and Danny have the powers. However, a lot of the house thinks Kevin has it, which is obviously not great for him because that also bumps him up on the target list as well. I mean, overall, Kevin is really just not in a good spot in the game. He has some really bad reads on the game. Mind you, a lot of that's because he's not being given information. There are points where he actually has some pretty good reads, and that's when he's given all the real information on the game. Like recently, where he was finally told about the Danny and Tyler stuff, and he actually believes Tyler, and he told Devon that he believes Tyler, and Danny is more than likely the person lying. Again, that's because he finally has accurate information and can make accurate reads based off of that. But most of the time, he's being fed fake information because of that he has very terrible reads on the game. Like, the season as a whole has not dropped my opinion on Kevin as a player. I still do think Kevin is a pretty good Big Brother player. I just don't think this house was his ideal scenario, and I do think he is more than likely going home soon. If he doesn't go home this week, which I, I do think he is the most likely boot this week, I think he'll probably go home next week or the week after. Again, he's not long for this game at this point. I do think he is being looked at as a threat from the, like the Cody and Nicoles of the world because he is probably the most able of the people not in the majority alliance. So because that Kevin is here at number 11. Now at number 10 is another person that's in a pretty similar spot to Kevin. I think it's probably the second most likely boot for this week at this point, And that is Ian. And Ian is someone that's like kind of like Kaser, where I am pretty disappointed with Ian on this season because I really thought Ian would come in as a changed person. Uh, I mean, it's been eight years since his season. He's done a lot of maturing. I mean, he was 21 at the time. He's 29 now, but he's pretty much the same player. <laughs> like he's the exact same person and somehow even worse at comps. I and mean, we just had the wall yesterday and the wall is something that Ian did very well at. His first time, I mean, if he wanted to win it, I do think he could have won the wall in BB14. And he was very good in endurance comps as a whole. And this time, he's won the first few out. And I, I do think Ian is in for a rocky road. I, I think he's going to be one of the next few boots, 100%. I think he's a big target. He is a former winner. And really, he just hasn't been playing that well. He doesn't really have many relationships outside of Nicole Franzel, who she's more loyal to a lot of other people over him and he has made a more recent alliance with Tyler and I do think Tyler is probably willing to try to keep the target off his back but I don't think this is the week where he's going to be able to do it considering again Ian and Tyler are two of the more likely boots this week so I mean Ian hasn't been playing great this season I mean a lot of the season he's just been following Nicole Franzel I mean there was that point where due to the wall yeller he did start to turn on Cody and Nicole and start telling the house that Cody and Nicole are the nucleus, which again wasn't accurate, but he believed it was true. But I do think that is a warped perception that he has that will also not benefit him in the game. That he's not really seeing the full picture here. And because of that, I just don't have much confidence in Ian doing well in the season. Again, I don't think he's as well positioned to do well in comps as he was last time. He hasn't really been making relationships with a lot of the people in the house. And also, there is this sentiment in the house of we're not going to allow. A former winner to win again. I mean, there are people that are saying that. Davon and Enzo being two of the more notable people who have said that. I mean, Enzo's really going hard on that notion. Even Ian himself has said that he's not going to vote for a former winner when the only other former winner is Nicole Fransel. Like, it was just something just dumb to say. There is this notion out there, and I do think that is something that also doesn't benefit Ian because that Ian lands at number 10. Now, we're number nine, and number nine here, I can't believe this person's that high. But it's mostly because I know this person's not going home this week, and that is David. Now, David has almost no chance of winning this game, I don't think. I mean, I think it'll be a very, very tough road for him to win this season. To be honest, I, I think Kevin is probably a more likely winner than David is. However, we know David's safe. I mean, again, like David's more than likely going to be nominated. Again, I mean, at the point that I'm releasing this video, this stuff will already have happened, but David is probably going to be nominated. He's going to use his power, which makes him safe for the week, which is already better than I could say for Ian and Kevin. I mean, there's another person that is a very clear target, but I think that 
other target has more of an end game than any of these people we've talked about. I mean, David's another one that's just not in the majority. He doesn't really have good relationships in the game. I mean, with the people that are left in the game, I mean, the only people he has a good relationship with are only like what, like Enzo, Tyler, and Kevin? I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, he's not in a good position here. He is going to be using his power though, which I do think gives him some credibility in the game. I do think if he gets to the end, I do think there's a chance he wins a jury vote largely due to his story i don't think he will be the strongest player i mean like he would need to be up against like a christmas maybe uh nicole franzel maybe an ian but it's like more than likely I, I don't really see him winning a jury vote unless it's against some pretty weak competition but there is still a chance but, i mean overall though david's played terribly this season i i will fully admit this i i I mean, I had so much confidence that I'm coming into this season. I mean, BB21, I mean, just based on what we were shown, I, I thought he had a lot of potential in the game. I thought he could have been a great player. I mean, mind you, there were some warning signs even then that he would be the way that he is, where he does have some pretty awkward conversations. I remember he would have some awkward conversations with, like, Holly in particular, but it's like, on this season, it's like, it's that to an extreme. I mean, it's like, he is a terrible player. I mean, he is one of the worst players I've seen, especially one of the worst players to make it this far into the game. Because usually players this bad get taken out very early on. But he's been able to squeak his way to the jury now and possibly even further the way that he has conversations with people is just really weird it's like he has no real ability to read people when he's talking to them and i think mixing that in with the fact that he has this like misguided thought that like since obviously last season he was portrayed in a way that like oh my god all of his reads are correct he's this mastermind i think because of that in this season he thinks the same thing he thinks that all of his reads are correct when a lot of them are very very wrong also how he handles his davon relationship is really terrible i mean davon is someone that he should be very closely aligned with when instead davon wants him out like davon doesn't trust him at all just because of how poorly he mismanaged that relationship even tyler is someone that he had a pre-game final two with even then he's like ruining his relationship with tyler over and over and over again even to the point where like last week after the powers and everything like he himself has a power yet he's interrogating tyler about having a power and is like upset that tyler won't tell him he has a power when obviously tyler doesn't have a power it's like I, I david is just so bad at this game and again the only reason he's this high is because he does have that power that he's going to use and through that we'll make it one more week and i i do think there's at least a sliver of a chance he wins a jury vote so because of that he lands at number nine now number eight is someone that i was so high on <laughs> for the first few weeks of the game I'm really up until this last week and she just completely plummeted in my estimations and that is Christmas. And I thought Christmas was playing pretty well. I mean Christmas was part of the majority group, part of that majority power structure and was someone that no one was targeting. Again, like no one put her up for that knockout comp and Christmas was in just such a great position but then she had to ruin it. I mean like the way that she handles the Bay and Day stuff was not great. Obviously, it wasn't great from a personal standpoint, from a like perception standpoint. Obviously, she just came out of that looking terribly. But also within the game, she has so many people now that just didn't like how she handled that situation, which I do think very much harms her chances of winning a jury. I think that was Christmas's problem from the very beginning, was that I just didn't know who would hand her the money, who would give Christmas the win. And I, I thought for his first few weeks, she was doing a pretty good job at getting people to do so. However, in that one blow up that they had, I do think she ruined pretty much any chance she had of winning a jury vote. I do think at this point, she is probably the biggest goat of the season. I do think she is someone that is going to be dragged along for a little while. I mean, like this is the two ways that Christmas can go. I think Christmas could be targeted pretty soon as this physical threat and as someone that is a bit unstable within the game. Or she's someone that's going to be dragged very far into the game and someone that will be taken to the end and be beaten. Like, I think Nicole Franzel is someone that is very incentivized at this point to take Christmas to the end. Now, do I think she's going to? I don't know. But it's like, Tyler is now probably way more incentivized to take Christmas to the end because like, hey, Christmas just can't win a jury vote. I would be mind blown if Christmas wins a jury vote. And the only reason she's as high as she is here at number eight is because she is better positioned than those other three. Again, those other three, David, Ian, Kevin, both all three of them are not in the power structure. 
they're all on the outs. Two of them are very likely boots this week. And while there's like a slim, I mean, really, there's not much of a chance that Christmas goes home this week. But I mean, I do think Christmas could be targeted somewhat soon. I do think your position is much more solid than the people that we just talked about. Like, I do think if she goes on the block, there are going to be people that want to keep her. Now, is there going to be enough? I don't know. But I do think obviously Tyler will want to keep her. I do think Memphis is someone that would want to keep her. I, I do think there are people that are going to be willing to fight to keep her. But she definitely didn't better her odds in this last week. So she lands at number eight. Now number seven is the highest placement out of someone not in the power structure. And I think this person's kind of ended up in a decent spot now. And that is Devon. And Devon coming into the season, I was super high on Devon. There was a point where Devon was my winner pick. But Devon was definitely up there. I thought Devon came into the season with a very, very good position. I mean, she was friends with a good amount of the cast. She was someone that I thought had learned from her previous mistakes and had learned some things from the challenge. But, I mean, I think through this season, though, I, I think it's become clear Devon's just not a good player. I, I, I think it's become clear that Devon just has a very warped perception of how to play the game. She has this notion of testing people, of giving people fake information and just seeing if it gets back to her to kind of test these people's relationships. But it's like that's ruining your relations like once these people compare notes like that ruins your game and that's exactly what happened it's like she told danny that nicole tried to make an alliance with her and that tyler tried to make an alliance with her and while danny initially distrusted tyler where tyler denied it she went to nicole and nicole denied it which told danny that Devon must be the one lying, not Nicole or Tyler. But I do think at this point with Bailey gone, Devon's in the better position. I mean, like, I don't think she's in the grace position. I do think she is someone that if she gets to the end, I think she very likely wins. Uh, I would be very surprised if she gets to the end against someone other than like a, maybe a Tyler, Cody, or Enzo. Like, I think if she gets to the end without those people, I think she is very likely uh, the winner of the season. The question is, how does she get there? And I do think there's a path at this point. I, I didn't think there was one before this weekend. She would have been very low on the ranking if there wasn't one. Like, she would have been with the Kevin, Ian, and Davids. But the reason why she's higher is because I do think there is a path now where Danny and Nicole have repaired their relationship with Davon to the point where they want Davon in the final five. Now, again, I, I think the biggest problem for Davon is I do think if she wants to get to the end, I think she's going to need to get there herself. And the fact that Davon, through three seasons now, hasn't won a single competition is not very indicative of her being able to get to the end herself. And that's why she's not higher on the list. I do think she has done some work to position herself much better within the house. I, I don't think she's the target for anybody for the next couple weeks, but... I do think there's going to come a time where she's going to need to win out. And I just don't feel like she's someone that's very likely to do so. So because of that, she lands at number seven. Now, number six is someone that, I mean, if you asked me last week, she would have been towards the bottom. But right now she is HOH. And I do think she has done some work to repair her relationships in the house. And that is Danny. Now, again, Danny, last week, I thought she was dead man walking. I mean, most scenarios led to a Danny boot. But she got very lucky in Christmas winning HOH, which gave Danny an extra week to repair her relationships. And she did that. I, I do think Danny did a pretty good job at convincing Bay and Day that Tyler was the one lying to them when really she was the one lying to him and she was lying to them in that conversation I and mean, a lot of the hostility that Bay had towards Tyler there last week was due to the things that Danny was telling her that a lot of it wasn't true and I do think you have to give Danny credit that she was able to convince Bay and Day that Tyler was the one lying to them however I, I do think Danny is also still not in a great position again she's this high because she is HOH and she does have a path forward again she does have this plan for the end game she has a plan of getting to the final six with Cody Enzo Nicole Davon and Memphis take out Memphis at six get to the final three with Nicole and Cody and then obviously she's assuming that they both take her to the end that's obviously an incorrect assumption but I think mean, she has this end game plan and I do think that there is a chance that something close to this happens. However, I think the thing that she doesn't know is that so many people in the house have turned against her. I mean, at this point, we have Enzo and Tyler who are 100% against her. They, they want her out right away. And she might be able to get Tyler out this week. And who knows? Like, obviously, her initial noms are, are David and Kevin. David's going to use his power. I don't know who she replaces him with, if she replaces him with 
E and Chris Miller Tyler. Obviously, by the time this video comes out, you probably will know. But Tyler is definitely a very likely backdoor target this week. The question is, can she even get him out? Which we'll talk about in a second. But again, Enzo and Tyler are 100% against her. Cody has been talking about how sketchy she is. I, I don't think he wants her out immediately, but she is definitely on his radar. And he has been able to flip Nicole Franzel against her. He's talked to Nicole Franzel about Danny wanting to make a final two with him, which has turned Nicole Franzel against Danny as well, at least as a long-term prospect. I, again, I do think for a short term, they're still going to work together, but I do think eventually they're going to turn on Danny. And I, I don't feel great about Danny making it towards the end game. I think Danny will definitely be the boot within the next few weeks. And a lot of that's due to her own sloppy gameplay. I mean, she's played this game so sloppily through her trusting Tyler too much at points and Tyler using that against her. Also through her make, trying to making side deals with like Janelle that exposed her entire alliance. Like Danny has done a pretty bad job through this season it really is a miracle that she's still in the game right now i mean she's currently hoh she got very lucky with the christmas hoh before that she got lucky that caser really blew up his game forcing enzo to take him out in the week before that because like i think there was a very good chance that danny could have been the fourth boot of this season if caser didn't do that so i mean danny is pretty lucky to still be in the game but i feel like that luck's definitely going to run out relatively soon so she's here at number six. Now at number five. At number five, we have someone I can't believe he's this high because he's someone that really has no end game. Like, I don't know what he's doing, but he's still there and he's still in a decent spot and that is Memphis. And I, I think one of the funniest things about Memphis is how the show, like, or at least not even the show, more so just Julie Chen seems to think Memphis is like the mastermind of the season. And obviously, like we know, Memphis is part of the committee alliance. He is the founder of the committee alliance. However, he's also probably the person that the committee is the least loyal to. I mean, the, the alliance as a whole doesn't even look at him really as part of that alliance. Yet he's in a good spot. I mean, no one's targeting him. And technically being in that alliance, I think has garnered him some safety to the point where like no one within that alliance is going to target him because like they know that he thinks that he's within the alliance. He also has that very close connection to Cody where Cody is the person who is dominating this game. Spoiler for later on the list. And I think that adds even more safety for Memphis. I mean, it is very beneficial to Cody to keep Memphis for the end game. And at this point, we're pretty poised to have Memphis at least reach the final like seven or eight. I mean, like he's not going to be a target for the next few weeks, I don't think. But I just don't think he has an end game though. I mean, like he has a path to the end game, but he has no actual end game. I don't know how he gets to the actual end unless he just wins out. Like, I don't think anyone wants to take him to the end. I don't think there's anybody that's really willing to take him to the end. And the fact that he now has his back injury, which I don't know how that will affect him in competitions. It's like, I, I don't really feel too confident about him getting to the end of the game, but he is well positioned for right now. It's just a matter of how long that's going to last. And also, I don't think Memphis easily wins a jury vote. I, I, I think he is someone that could win a jury vote. I think he needs to be against very specific people, but I do think he loses against the Cody Enzo Tylers of the world. So, I mean, I do think he'll need to try to get there with Christmas, maybe. I think that's probably his best shot, but like overall, and like Memphis is in a good position for the short term. I just don't feel like he has an end game. So because that he lands at number five. Now number four, at number four, it's again surprising this person's this high considering he just tried to quit the game, but at number four here we have Tyler. Tyler is such a weird case on this season. Again, if you asked me like two weeks ago, Tyler would have been number one, number two. Now he's dropped to number four, and again, it's weird to say because again, he just tried to quit the game. He is a pretty likely target this week. It's not out of the realm of possibility that Danny tries to backdoor him this week, but I still feel confident about Tyler as a whole. Again, like Tyler is someone that I think... Through this season, for me personally, I think Tyler has demonstrated that he is one of the best players of all time. I, mean, I already thought that after BB20, BB20 was one of the best games ever played. I, I think Tyler dominated that season. But here on BB22, I think considering he came into the season not in a great spot, he was one of the bigger names. Plus also the fact that he came into this season having just lost Casey and Josh. And also, just his head hasn't been in the game. I think considering all those things, he's done really well on this season. I, I think how he played week four was a master class of gameplay. Uh, for him to completely turn the tables on Danny, which essentially ripped all the power away from Cody 
was so masterful. The problem is that he let go of his game last week where he tried to quit the game. I think through that, like with him just being checked out of the game, I think he stopped managing a lot of those relationships that were so integral to his game. His relationship with Enzo was so important where he was able to essentially flip Enzo against Cody. I'm not to the point where they were going to target Cody, but there was definitely that point where Enzo was starting to lean closer to Tyler than to Cody, and that would have been so important for his game. But he kind of let that go right now. Right now, I do see Enzo back in the good graces of Cody. Mind you, I I, I do think Tyler is still in a good spot with Enzo. I, I think they're still good. I, I still think Enzo wants to take Tyler towards the end, but he's definitely l- loosened his grasp on Enzo. He's obviously lost Bay, and I mean Bay is gone, but lost Day as well. Day is someone that's actively targeting him now. Danny knows that he was targeting her earlier, and that's why she would potentially take him out now he's probably lost some confidence in christmas after him trying to quit however despite all those things he's still not in a terrible spot i mean obviously there's a chance of him getting backdoored that could happen but if we take that out of it i mean like he has a final two of christmas final two of david which at this point i do think they are at least some i mean i think christmas is 100 percent loyal to that i think david is still like hesitant of tyler but i do think there is some loyalty there obviously he has a final two with ian which again probably no real loyalty there but i mean i think that's at least something that he can have in his back pocket he has the final three with cody and enzo which i do think they are for the most part loyal to i think enzo's 100 percent loyal to it i think cody's kind of like i think cody would go other directions but i do think he wants to take tyler a few weeks more down the road and he does have a good enough relationship with memphis to the point where memphis isn't targeting him anytime soon so I, I think Tyler is still decently positioned and that's what I'm saying like Danny could 100% backdoor Tyler this week but does Tyler go home that's the bigger question I, I think it matters who Tyler's up against again if Ty- I think Tyler 100% goes home if he's against Enzo if he's against Cody however more than likely he's going to be on the block against a Kevin and Ian one of these other people and in those scenarios I don't think Tyler goes home I think the big thing in that scenario is does Cody flip on Tyler that's the main thing of does Tyler go home or not is if Cody flips on him but the thing is that I think if Cody wants to flip I think Cody would want the approval of Enzo and is Enzo going to flip against Tyler I don't think so because I do think Enzo is 100% loyal to that triple threat final three alliance and because I don't think Tyler goes home even if he is backdoored but it's definitely not a great position to be in I mean like he 100% needs Danny out real quick like once Danny's out of the game I do think Tyler's in a much much better position like he still has like obviously Davon coming after him and I do think at that point it's getting close to the point where like someone like a Cody Nicole and Memphis should be taking him out as well but again he's gonna be reaching that end game with a lot of people that are pretty close to him at that point I mean again the Christmas David even Ian's of the world are leaning more so towards him I feel like when push comes to shove so it's like I I do think Tyler is not the worst position in the world and also I just have so much more faith in Tyler's ability to play the game than I do with any of the people really on this entire season I I think Tyler is the best player on this cast and I I think that was before the season even started even like I I think that was like to be honest it wasn't even close like I I think Tyler is far and away the best player on this cast and to be honest that is a lot of the reason why he's as high as he is the problem is that he's just not in the game like i I just feel like if we just got tyler on 100 percent, if like we got tyler playing the game to win he would very clearly be number one right now again like he would have been number one a few weeks ago when he was able to flip the entire house against danny that was very impressive it's just he wasn't able to hold it because of his lack of focus on the game but if he's able to get his focus back on the game avoid the back door this week i do think he's going to be in a very very good spot moving forward and i think he's someone that if he gets to the end i do think he wins a jury vote pretty handily i mean i think the only person he would have trouble winning against is enzo i think it'll be close between him and cody but i do think tyler wins in most scenarios so because that tyler still lands here at number four now at number three at number three we have someone that Again, another one I'm very surprised that this person's as high. And to be honest, a lot of the reason why I'm surprised that certain people being as high on the list as I am is because for me, there's a very definitive top two. For me, the top two are very clear in a way, like the top two most likely to win the game. And like everyone else is kind of way below that. But at number three here, the closest person to them is Nicole Franzel. 
And Nicole's in a very weird spot right now where I, I, Nicole obviously has the final two with Cody. She does have a final two with Danny, but she doesn't trust Danny anymore. But Danny is currently HOH and through, I mean, Nicole is safe. I mean, Nicole is at this point, I, I think pretty locked in for the end game. I would be very surprised if Nicole gets taken out before the final seven. And I think something that this season has really taught me is that Nicole is a really great big brother player. I mean, hate her all you want. And I think a lot of the reasons why people hate her is why she is a great big brother player because she is so paranoid and unconfident in her decision-making. Like a lot of that stuff is why she is portrayed the way she is. That's why she's looked at the way she is from the players in the house. And through that, that allows her to skate through the game. Like, I, I do think Nicole is someone that I will be talking, like, eventually down the road, I will be redoing my top 10 players of all time list for Big Brother. After BB22, I do think certain things are going to change, and I think it's very, very likely that we see Nicole Franzel enter that list. I think Nicole Franzel is actually in a decent spot to get to the end of the game. Again, like, I think a lot of people are looking at Nicole Franzel as someone that can't win the game. Again, we do have these people that don't want winners to win again. Mind you, I think that also puts a target on her back, especially once Ian goes, she'll be the only winner left in the game. Though it is kind of funny that people are having talks about previous winners and like they're kind of like forgetting that Nicole Franzel is a winner, which I find funny. But it's like Nicole, I, I do think is pretty decently positioned right now. Again, she has a solid end game. Like she wants to get to the end with Cody. Mind you, I do think Cody beats her at the end. Again, she has very close allies like Danny and Devon that she does want to get very close to the end to. She has a final two deal with Christmas, which would also be very beneficial for her moving down the road. She has a final two with Ian, which probably doesn't matter, but she still has that. Again, she's pretty well positioned in the house right now. And the only way I really see her going home is if someone like a Tyler wins HOH and then Danny wins Veto and that leaves Nicole as like the bigger target. But then even then, it's like, who's she go home against? Like if she's on the block against... Like, Devon, I think Devon goes home. She's on the block against, like, Ian. Ian goes home. She's on the block against Kevin a Memphis or, like, any of these people. I think more than likely the other person goes home. So I do think Nicole Franzel is just overall very well positioned right now in the game. And I think she's poised to possibly become the first two-time winner of Big Brother. Like, how insane would that be? It's like, Dr. Will can do it. Dan can do it. You know who did it? Nicole Franzel. But it's like, I mean, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. I, I do think Nicole Franzel still has a chance of being one of the all-time greats of Big Brother somehow. So because of that, she lands at number three. Now we're number two, and I, it's pretty clear who the top two are. I mean, they are the core of the house right now. The question is the order. And for me, number two, I mean, it has to be Cody. I mean, Cody uh, is dominating this game. I mean, I think Do Cody is the most dominant player of this season. He is the person in the center of the majority alliance. He is the person that, while he isn't dictating the majority alliance, like he isn't like the sole person making decisions for that majority alliance. A lot of the decisions that the majority alliance have been making are things that very much benefit Cody. That being said, it hasn't been a clean ride. As I said, like at week four, I do think he loses a lot of control there to Tyler and it's through the graces of Tyler wanting to quit the game that Cody's able to get a lot of that control back. He is in a very good spot right now where again he is the center of the house. I mean he has very good relationships with Nicole Franzel, with Tyler, with Enzo, with Danny, with Memphis. He's in the committee alliance with Christmas. That being said though he's not in a perfect position. There are people that would definitely put Cody on the block and possibly even target Cody. I mean someone like a Kevin, someone like an Ian, even possibly a Davon, probably a David. Like, I, mean, I think those people would 100% put Cody on the block and possibly even try to get him out. The question is, how do you get Cody out? And really, I think the only way you get Cody out is possibly putting him against Nicole Franzel. But I think the more secure way is against Enzo. I think every other person goes home against Cody. I think Christmas goes home against Cody. Tyler goes home against Cody. Memphis goes home against Cody. A lot of these other people, and again, that's a lot of that being due to how well insulated Cody is within the game, but there are chances he goes home. And that's a lot of the reason why he's at number two is because the number one person we'll be talking about, I think is 100% safe right now. I don't see any way that person goes home. Well, with Cody, I think there are chances that he goes home. And also, there's been talk about how people don't respect the type of game that he's playing. I mean, Davon has openly said that she doesn't respect Cody's game because he makes too many Final Two deals, which is just kind of dumb. But it's like, if that's a sign of what's to come, like, there's a chance Cody loses to a bitter jury. Again, quote-unquote bitter, but like a jury that doesn't respect his gameplay. 
but he's still a dominant force on this season. He is one of the better position players in the entire season. So for me, he still lands at number two. And at number one, I mean, number one's obvious again. Like, it has to be Enzo. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's like, it's so weird coming from the preseason where I was so down on Enzo. I really did not think Enzo would do well. Like, I thought he would come into the game, try to make another brigade, called out very early and be taken out very early. And how wrong was I? Like, I think he's played a pretty masterful game up until this point. Like, he is a master at the social game. I think he is someone that is just so naturally likable to everybody. I also feel like on this season, he's garnered a lot more respect than he had on BB12. Like, in BB12, he was pretty much a GOAT at the end. Like, no one was voting for Enzo to win that season. Well, on this season, like, he's winning competitions. I think he's beloved by most of the cast, and he has very good relationships with almost everybody. Like, I mean, outside of, like, Ian and maybe like a Memphis, maybe a Kevin. Like he has pretty solid relationships with every other player. Like he's obviously in the core four with Cody, Danny, and Nicole Franzel. And obviously he's not loyal to that, but he has that. He has the triple threat with Cody and Tyler. He does have an agreement with both Kevin and Christmas from the week that he was HOH. He seems to get along with Memphis to the point where the committee looks at Enzo as like their seventh member. It's like Enzo is so well positioned in this game. Like I don't see any way Enzo goes home anytime soon. No one's targeting Enzo. I think Enzo is locked in for the end game. And in the end game though, I, I do think he's going to have some trouble. I think he's going to need those last few comps to get to the end because I do think everyone knows how likable he is and how much he is going to win a jury vote. It's kind of funny because that's how he was perceived in BB12 from the people within the house, but it wasn't actually true. Like he doesn't win a jury vote on that season. But I think on BB22 here, that is actually the reality. I do think he more is the most likely winner of this season. I think he wins a jury vote against almost everybody on the season just due to how likable he is and how much he is playing the game. I think through his comp wins and also the amount of alliance that he's in, he can still bolster his gameplay to the jury while also having those personal connections with them that will make them want to vote for him in the end. I just see Enzo as the very clear front runner to win the game at this point. It's just a matter of can he squeak it out to the very, very end? Can he again get a Cody or a Tyler to take him to the end or can he win out and get to the end of himself that's really the main question but for me I, I just feel most secure about his position in the game so he lands here number one and there we go that is my mid-season power rankings for BB22 obviously I will be doing a review of the season once the season is finished I'll also be doing a kind of post-season power rankings essentially a player ranking after the season stay tuned for that i also have already recorded that i don't know when they'll be out but i did do two casting videos that are related to bb22 i did a worst possible cast video and i did a dream casting video for bb22 that will be coming out sometime in the next few weeks also down the road i would like to update my top 10 players of all time after the season as i do think it'll be interesting to see where certain players land i mean i think there's a lot of contenders on this season that could make the top 10 i think cody enzo nicole franzel tyler i think those people could very likely make it to top 10 so i think that'll be interesting to update later down the road but for now that's the video thank you for watching